Welcome to Mother Daughter Projects. I'm Vicki. I'm standing in my newly made over closet. Early this year, I found this pen on Pinterest and it inspired this whole thing. So come with me and I'll share all the things that I did in this closet to make it beautiful and functional for me. This closet was long overdue for a makeover. I never liked the wire shelving in here. There wasn't enough shoe storage and it was cluttered with stuff that didn't need to be in there. It was a great day when I started to remove all that wire shelving. There are a lot of screws holding this wire shelving in place. The little plastic holders are right side up and upside down, making it a little tricky to easily get these out. I used a variety of tools to get the connectors out of the wall, including this small pry bar. I used needle nose pliers to remove those plastic anchors. Once all the hardware was removed, it was time to fill in the holes. I used a paint scraper to be sure the area was free of any high points and then moved on to spackling the holes. I'm going to be adding three dressers in here. I want them to sit flush against the back wall, so we needed to remove the baseboard. Steph scored the caulk line and then we pried it off with pry bar and cleaned up the area. The three dressers I used were originally in Steph's childhood bedroom. I had previously painted one and had been using it as a nightstand. I painted the other two off cameras. You can find a link to that painting video below. With the dressers in place, we can now add rods for hanging clothes. Here Steph is finding the studs for the placement of the shelf rod brackets. Since she was drilling into a stud, there was no need for plastic anchors. We used a level to be sure the pair were placed at the same height. She repeated the process with the second bracket. We bought a board to create a shelf, which I painted off camera. The closet pole we bought was a little long, so Steph took it out to the garage and cut it with a circular saw fitted with a metal cutting blade. It cut like butter. The thing I disliked about the previous metal shelving was it didn't allow clothes to slide along a rod. This new system eliminates that issue. Since this rod will not have the addition of a shelf, we are using this pole socket set, which is screwed into the wall on each side of the pole. On the other side, we cut the pole a little shorter and added another bracket. This will allow room for dresses. We are adding wall control to the opposite end of the closet for shoe storage and storage for stuff that would ordinarily be stored in the bathroom medicine cabinet. Teamwork always makes hanging the panels quick and easy. One holds the panel, the other marks the screw hole placement. Holes are drilled for the wall anchors. Wall anchors are gently tapped into place with a rubber mallet and the panels are screwed into place. We couldn't wait to start adding the shelving. Actually, doing that helped us to figure out if we wanted to add two more regular sized panels or use a single horizontal one. The single panel won out. The single panel is hung the same way as the standard size panels. This wall control accessory may be my favorite. It's a little odd for a closet, but it was a must have for me. It's a paper towel holder, which will now free up space on my bathroom counter. We added two rails, which will become hanging space for flannel shirts, belts, and more. Here I'm adding the spring clips to the rail, which are actually for two storage, but I found work for hanging flannel shirts without damage. These clips just screw into place. The rails are put back into place and tested to see if they work as I thought. On to adding the wall hung shoe storage. We are using galvanized metal pegboard strips that I actually painted in the same white used for the closet shelf on the opposite side of the closet. We marked the placement, drilled holes, added the anchors, and screwed the strips into place. We added four standard slotted hooks to each strip. Each strip will hold two pairs of shoes. We hung the shoes to determine where to place the next row. Back out in the garage, we cut plywood to create a countertop to put over the three dressers. We attached the front edge with glue and a few brad nails. Off camera, the countertop was primed and then painted with the same color as the closet walls. To get ready for the epoxy finish, we protected the area and added TVAC tape to keep the edges clean. This is our first time to use Total Boat Tabletop Epoxy. The one-to-one -one mixing ratio could not have been easier. Pro tip, buy some plastic measuring cups at the dollar store to mix the epoxy. Thoroughly mix following the instructions. We first poured a very thin coat and spread it with these Harbor Freight plastic spreaders. And now for the bling. And yes, I separated out the black flecks from the rest. 
tedious, but also quite relaxing. This is Rust Oleum's Decorative Color Chips in the Glacier Gray Blend. The chips are actually used on garage floors. I first sprinkled on a light layer of very fine chips. This kitchen wire mesh strainer was a perfect tool for this. The front edge was a little hard to get the specks onto, so I blew them into place, which actually worked quite well. The larger flakes were tossed into the air to create a random pattern. That was fun. We did a few more layers of epoxy, waiting 6 to 12 hours between each coat. We used the heat gun to remove any lingering air bubbles. Can I just say, I just love how this turned out. TVAC tape is waterproof and very slick, so it's great to protect the edge from getting dried epoxy drips on it. Well, after living with the closet for a while, I decided I wanted to raise the dressers to counter height, just like I have in my bathroom. To do that, we created a base with two by sixes that are glued and nailed together. With the base completed and now painted with the closet wall color, we moved it into place. It was awkward to work in this small space, but we made it. We moved the dressers into place. The dressers are not attached to the base and were a tipping hazard until the wood hutch and countertop were put into place, which weighed everything down. In keeping with the use what we have nature of this makeover, we repurposed this old mid-century former shelf into a backsplash of sorts to bring a natural warm element into the space. We deconstructed it and cut it to size. We are using another element of the old piece as a top ledge. We cut a couple of pieces from what were the legs of this old piece. We're adding them to the open spaces to make a sort of ledge. Graining on this wood is amazing. We glued those pieces into the holes and then we glued and screwed the top ledge into place. Off camera, I did stain both the ledge and the blocks. The larger back piece just got cleaned. Here we are attaching one half of the French cleat to the back of the board so we can hang this on the wall right above the countertop. We added that wood at the bottom as a spacer so that the piece would hang flat on the wall. The other half of the French cleat was attached to the wall. All done and now time to decorate. What we learned. Well, the biggest thing was I lived this closet for a while after I basically finished everything I wanted. And because I lived with it, there were a few things I decided I wanted to change about this. And the first thing was the actual countertop. Now, when I first did that, the edge was not exactly what I wanted. I was really gonna be okay with it. And Steph's like, mm, you need to change that. So I did take it back to the garage did the whole not the whole thing but the edge over and i'm so glad that i went ahead and took that extra step to do it because i love the way it turned out the next thing was the height of my dressers now these are just standard dressers and they're fairly low and i decided after after folding clothes and towels on here that i wanted those to be counter height so that's the reason why they're raised up six inches so it makes it much easier to fold things makes it much easier to Put things away and it was a perfect solution and i absolutely love that again that was another step that we had to take but i i'm very happy with the way that turned out another thing was i lived with the wall control for a while and i actually absolutely love it i love the shoe storage that's one of my favorite things i love having the um the shelves where i can put medicines and sundries and things like that i had one extra panel and i didn't think i was going to use it but after again after living with i decided I'm gonna go ahead and put that up. I have more shoe storage and I can put my jewelry on it. So all in all, I live with the space. I found this, some things that worked, some things that didn't work and improved on those. And now I have a very bright and functional space that I really, really enjoy. Hey, before you go, if you'd like this video, please like and subscribe and give us a big thumbs up and we'll see you next time. Bye. Oh, whew, it's big. <laughs> it's a little higher than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> Is it too high? <laughs> I don't think I like that. <laughs> it's too big. It's too tall. <laughs> oh, I know why. Because <laughs> we raised it six inches. <laughs>
will not be using that right there because it's way too tall. 